As promised before we look into week three's material, I wanted to come back to our color extractor uh, and look at sorting. So um, in this section, we'll actually pick up from the previous notebooks. I've added a couple cells at the bottom of it. Um, and for this, we're just gonna sort by hue uh, or saturation or value, depending on what you want. Um, it's kind of some challenging issues with the way we manage color here. Um, one of the things is that because a lot of our films are very cinematic, they're gonna have a lot of blacks in them. And even though an image is black, it still has a hue attached to it. So if something is all the way black, but has just the slightest hint of like red or blue, it will get picked up as a hue sorting value. So let me just show you what we can do and then we'll talk a little bit about like some of the challenges and then I'll honestly probably write even more code for this another week when I don't have as many tutorials to cover um, that maybe improve our ability to sort things uh, beyond that. So first thing we're gonna do is, um, I'm assuming you've already gone through the rest of this notebook and you already have saved some of the k-means color extractions um, into a json file so this cell is just going to run that and reopen that file and all it's going to do is convert some of our colors our rgb colors to hsv colors so we'll add another cell or add another row into our json file called k-means hsv so we'll run this and in my case i think i've already run all of these across them so we'll just see a skip but if you do run this on your own you should see uh, the addition of uh, k-means as a uh, color Next, we're gonna go ahead and run this cell. So this cell is actually where we start doing our sorting and start grabbing our colors. So remember that uh, k-means gives us a uh, series of dominant colors depending on how many clusters you requested. If you requested six, then it's gonna give you six colors. And each of those colors has an index, right? There is the most predominant color all the way down to the least predominant color. Um, now, in a lot of our extractions, when you probably looked at your outputs, you probably saw that most of your first colors are very dark, right? If it's a very cinematic experience, it's probably shot with a lot of black and therefore black becomes the predominant color. You could still work off that. And in fact, I recommend kind of playing with this and seeing what you can generate. Um, so what we have here is on the right hand side, we've got what we're calling the color index. That is, what level of dominance do you want from your k-means? So zero is going to be the first, the most dominant color. Um, in a lot of cases, like in my example, it's gonna be black. So it might not actually be good, but we can still pull from it. Next, we're going to operate either on the hue, saturation, or value. So this will sort our uh, values by hue, saturation, or value. So remember, hue is the color wheel. So going from red to orange to yellow to blue to green to indigo to violet. Um, saturation is how much color is in that. So if you have a very desaturated looking film, um, it will be very you know muted colors versus very, very bright colors, which would be saturated. And then value is white to black. So how bright is the, is the dominant color essentially? Um, I definitely recommend starting with hue just because I think it might be the most interesting or it might be the easiest to sort of tell. Although actually value is probably the easiest to tell. You're gonna go from the darkest scenes to the, to the lightest scenes or yes, the darkest scenes to the lightest scenes in the way this is structured. So you may wanna start with that just to see what that looks like. Um, actually, let's do that. Let's just go hue and then value, or sorry, let's go uh, index zero and then value. So we're gonna take our dominant color and we're gonna sort our sequences by the darkest color to the lightest color. That's from zero to one. So let's go ahead and run this. And you'll see also my filtering by Blade Runner. So it's only in one film. I'll talk about that, why that is in a second. Um, the next is because we're actually gonna output this. So because we wanna output this value, um, this uh, particular setup isn't yet set up to uh, work with multiple different resolutions and things. I might update that uh, in the next couple weeks. Um, so try to filter this on just a single film and then you can uh, go from lightest to darkest in that particular film. Um, so in that case, we've got uh, Blade Runner and we're going to sort this by our values and this is going to output a video. Um, so this will output a video where all of your frames are sequenced from darkest to lightest. Um, you could run this again and on hue um, and output that based on the hue. So go from red to basically back to red. It's gonna go red, orange, green, blue, back to uh, violet red. Um, so you could run that. Now, one thing I also recommend you do is actually play with the index. Um, the reason for this is, is that again, remember that our first most dominant color in a lot of films is black. So if you set this to the next color, it's actually the next color um, that's usually not black, or it's the next predominant color. Again, this kind of matters depending on what your k-means looks like. So definitely review your k-means footage, um, the output color bars that we output, and kind of pick from there to see what is gonna make the most sense. 
Um, so you could sort by that and then run that. If you have 20 colors, um, you could sort by the 19th index. I think for most of us, if you ran the same stuff I did, you probably have six. The last would be five. Remember that um, in programming, zero is actually the first iteration or the first index. So uh, it's always the number of colors you have minus one is the last index. Um, let me show you what these look like when you sort them. So let's start with our sorted values. So in this piece, we have here our sorted value. And you'll see it starts off with a very black frame, right? And then as it gets closer and closer toward the end, it's more of the middle tones until we get to the end, which is, you know, this is clearly the brightest value. So again, it's a little tricky to tell. It might also be interesting to apply this using uh, the second or third index of your colors because you might get more of a clear idea of sort of like, you know, this one would still probably be the darkest, but you might get more as you go through it. So again, with this particular clip, it also might be kind of hard because in this particular Blade Runner trailer, there's just a lot of dark images. Um, stuff where it's got a lot of pure colors might be better for other, other reasons. Um, let's also look at one other piece, or actually let's look at our, our, our hues and our, our hue sorts here. So let me pull these down. So here we have oops, uh, our hue index of 1. Let's start with hue index of 0. So in this case, as we scrub through, you'll see, I mean, this is where it's so hard to tell. So clearly this is the red section. Right, red. And I kind of feel like this is the yellow section, right? There's some yellow tones in here. It's quite hard to tell with the zero index. And that's probably because the zero index for most of this is black. And remember, just the slightest shifts in color can actually change what the hue actual value is. Because remember, the value for most of these is like, 0 to zero to point zero 0.05, but then the uh, the actual hue might shift very slightly here. So this is where it's not ideal. Like using this on like this, the first index is probably not the best. Let's look at our second index, which is actually index uh, zero or is index one. And then when we run this through here, we'll see okay more red. Maybe more yellow through here. maybe blues. And then, you know, you can kind of see maybe some purples here back to red. So this is probably a little bit better. Um, again, it's kind of hard to tell with this clip. Like, you know, maybe if I were going to grab a film that was like tinted uh, and had different tint colors, it'd be easier to sort of see it resorted. Um, but this is the challenge. So I think what I will also do um, in the near future is actually add um, some other capabilities of filtering. Because one thing you might want to do is actually say, only give me um, the color values where uh, the hue is of a certain, you know, the hue is sorted, but then only show me where the predominant color is, say, between uh, 0.25 and 0.75 on the value scale. That's going to eliminate all your blacks and not show you anything with a lot of black in it and just show you that sort of mid-tone color. Maybe you want to play with saturation too, so it's less um, desaturated and more of the saturation levels. So color requires, like this color sorting actually requires uh, you to still work on all three dimensions of it, um, and it's a bit of a challenge. So I recommend playing with this. Try it with your footage and see if your footage is better than this particular clip. Um, as I scrub through this, I actually think this one's, I can see it, but it might not, if I were to just show this to someone, I'm not sure they would be like, oh yeah, that's color sorted. Um, so try it and see what happens. Uh, so I probably will be making updates to this uh, color sorter as we uh, expand our capabilities in the next couple weeks. Um, so try, give that a try and see what you think. Um, and then let's move on to um, starting to look at content and uh, how to extract content using classifiers.